Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. This week, the Old Testament meets the new as we connect the Jewish Passover to Resurrection Sunday. We're so glad you've joined us today. I am David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. And I am Jeffrey Seif. And Jeffrey Seif is thrilled. I don't want you to pass over the opportunity to learn about Passover and its Easter connection. I say that, you might have seen pictures of the Last Supper, Jesus, there's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we got that, remember he broke it, he gave it to the disciples and said, this is my body. The Jewish plate there with lots of food, it all means something. We want to connect the dots between the Jewish story and the new story, and it's coming to you now here on this exclusive. Celebration that we've been practicing for a long time, over 3,000 years? Jews going back 3,000 years, more yes. than that. Christian people, Jews go back and remember Moses and the Passover. Christian people go back and remember Jesus and the Last Supper. We connect the dots. I've heard it said that Passover is like their Independence Day. It really is. There's the deliverance from oppression in a literal political sense, in a spiritual sense with the cross. So much more about this feast and this meal, but now first, let's learn about the foods of the Passover. In case you're thinking that's maybe what a Jewish chef looks like, and I can assure you that I'm not one. This actually is the garment uh, that's worn by uh, dads, uh, fathers, husbands uh, during the uh, Passover. Our, uh, our home is our castle, it's our temple, our sanctuary, and the man is the priest of the home. And so it is that we don the priestly garment, the kittle. Similarly, the priestly mitre. What's interesting is that it's the father's responsibility to teach, to inculcate into the young what it means to be Jewish, to, to keep alive the story, to tell of God's redemptive acts. And so it is to do so at this special Passover. Dad dresses for the occasion. These foods help dress the occasion as well. Let me explain them to you before we walk through them. You've heard me to say already that the Passover commemorates uh, our freedom from slavery. We have food that we eat here that's called charosis. It's an admixture of nuts and apples and honey. It's to remind individuals of the mortar. It used to be that when we were slaves, we were uh, beaten into manufacturing bricks to build up somebody else's empire. And we eat this at the Passover to remind us of that. Similarly, we eat something called moror. It comes from the Hebrew word for bitterness. In fact, I'm getting a little teary-eyed. Uh, my eyes water, not because of the sentiment of the moment, but simply because this is so harsh. The, the bitter herbs, the horseradish, uh, is affecting my, my tear ducts, interestingly. And Jewish people eat this at Passover. It reminds us of the bitterness of slavery. And I got news for you, this is Jewish antihistamine. You eat this stuff, it's going to give you a jolt and clear out your sinuses quick. We have a carpus that we eat as well. Uh, you might recall that when God said to get a lamb without spot or blemish, he said to take the blood and put it in a basin and to dip some, uh, some grass in there and use it as an effect like a paintbrush and then to uh, you know, use it to spread the blood on the house. And this carpus is a reminder of, of, of that, of the, uh, the, the grass that was used. The Lord said, get a lamb without spot or blemish. It's interesting for my money in both Old and New Testaments that, uh, that uh, salvation comes through the agency of an unblemished lamb. Well, since the temple's been destroyed, uh, Jewish people no longer have a place for sacrifice, but we remember the sacrifice of that lamb every year. 
in every Jewish household, this table is set with these foods and there's the shank bone of a lamb to remind us of that spotless lamb's sacrifice. We also have uh, salt water that's used uh, to remind how we used to cry. Uh, there are tears that are shed in bondage. It could very well be that some of you are shedding tears over one thing or another and uh, slavery causes bitterness and bitterness causes tears and we remember that when we dip and we, we, we taste the salt water. There's an, an egg as well uh, and by the way if you take uh, uh, Zola Levitt at his word and you'll hear at the end of the program uh, how there's an offer on the program for his uh, lengthy uh, treatment of the Passover, two programs worth. He goes into the egg in more detail as well as all of this stuff. We'll be hearing him a little bit later on. The egg is a symbol that interestingly is part of the Jewish Passover today, but it's something that got slipped in yesterday. If you want more of that, you'll have to hear Zola on that. There are other things here, and we'll hear from Zola in a moment as well. Passover is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And you can recall, that is New Testament readers can recall how at the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body. He would have been eating matzah. And a lot of this stuff is passed around at the Passover. Similarly, Jewish people uh, drink wine at the Passover. Actually, there's four cups of wine. And in as much as Yeshua, Jesus is on record saying, take, eat, this is my body. Similarly, he passes the cup and he says, drink, this is my blood. Again, the usage of body and blood, bread and wine imagery is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's part of the Jewish Passover. We're going to come back in a minute after we hear from Zola and we're going to see exactly where uh, in the Passover dinner, which goes on for hours, we are going to alight upon the moment when Jesus gave communion and we're going to see how an understanding of these foods and this process illuminates the communion story. This is a long evening, I can tell you. And uh, at the end of this, this meal, the last thing eaten is that hidden afakoman. You remember the piece of bread we broke last week? We took the middle piece out of this bag, broke it, wrapped it up in a white cloth, hid it away. Father now brings it forth again, gets it out of its hiding place. And this piece of bread and the third cup of wine, the cup of redemption, is the Lord's Supper. It's not like it. It is it. It's the original. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the communion, the Eucharist, uh, whatever you want to call it. This red and this particular wine. You see, I, I told you you can see the whole service. You'll 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 appreciate it better. So this is uh, this is how it comes out of the service. And let me say a few words about the bread and the wine. Uh, we can pick up Jesus doing this in the gospel, uh, Matthew 26:26. 26, 26. It says, as they were eating, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them, said, take, eat, this is my body. Zola just gave us a beautiful window into the connection between the Last Supper and the Passover. I don't know that they got it at the first. Uh, we have a uh, beautiful plate, a Seder plate, that's employed at the Passover. The foods that I spoke about earlier uh, are set on the plate. There's no room for me to be able to do that and hold it all up. But that night I believed, and you heard Zola to say as much, that uh, Jesus was serving up something special that they didn't quite expect. Let's open up our Bibles, please. I want to begin in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26. Therein we get a moment uh, when uh, communion was given, we're told in verse 26, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. What's interesting is that Jesus interrupted the meal. It was at the very end of the meal, actually. They're finishing up and Jesus takes a piece of bread and he breaks it. 
and he says, take, eat, this is my body. Now, at a Jewish Passover, we have a matzotash, a container here for unleavened bread. And during the dinner, um, the father uh, determines that someone should go in there and take a piece of bread and break it. And he's going to take it then and put it in a special uh, compartment. This is uh, acquired from a Jewish bookstore. It says on it, uh, afikomen in Hebrew. Now what happens is right after supper or as it's winding down, this is retrieved. And then the father or whoever is leading the Passover Seder is going to take this piece of bread and he's going to break it and give everybody at the, at the table to eat. Standard Jewish practice, right at the edge of the meal. Similarly, uh, the goblets will be poured again. There's actually four cups of wine. And the third cup will be poured. And at this juncture then, at the table, dinner concludes with the eating of the afikomen and drinking the third cup. And this is striking, it seems to me. We're told in the um, Matthew Gospel that while they were eating, Jesus took the bread and the cup. So it tells you we're working with the third cup of wine and the afikomen. And he says that he broke it and he gave it to them and said, eat. This is striking. And you heard Zola Levitt, the late Zola Levitt, to reference it. And what's the it again? This is a point in the uh, Jewish Passover Seder where participants are remembering the body of the lamb that was slain as well as the blood of the lamb that was slain. Once upon a time in a land far away, Israelites were in a land far away, in fact, in Egypt, in servitude, and they were in trouble, and they couldn't, they couldn't break the yoke, you know, they were just in a bad way. And they cried out to God, and God had them to get a spotless lamb and to apply the blood of that lamb, and by virtue of their so doing, they were set free. Inasmuch as these various Jewish foods here uh, tell the story of the Exodus, here we're at the point in the Passover Seder where individuals are remembering the foods that relate to the body of that lamb and the, the, the cup of redemption in the Jewish Passover, the blood of that lamb. And isn't it fascinating when Jesus is going through the Last Supper with his disciples, he says, hey guys, that's my body. Hey guys, that's my blood. What's his point? I want you to get the point, and I think it's a good one. Back then, there was Pharaoh, the ruler of that world, and people were enslaved to him. Bad politics, lots of misery, uh, the tide wasn't going their way, and there's nothing they could do to fix it. But God loved them. God said, get a lamb without spot or blemish and slay it, and apply the blood of that lamb, and you will be set free from Pharaoh, the ruler of that world, through the agency of a spotless lamb and through the application of its blood. Friends, that's Bible 101 in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, Salvation 101 is a story about Satan, who's the ruler of this world, to use the language of the text. And you know what? People are enslaved to him. That's the bad news. They're oppressed, afflicted, addicted, disconcerted, woeful, mournful, can't fix it. Just weeping in silence, weeping in secret. But the good news today as yesterday is that God has provided a lamb. The New Testament story is that God so loved the world that he sent his son into the world to be that Passover lamb. I find it interesting in the Gospels that it was at Passover time when Jesus first articulates an awareness of his ministry as a young boy, when his mother, thinking he got lost in the crowd, finds him in the temple and he says, I've got to be about my father's business. And what was dad's business? In that house of that day, it was the slaughter of the lambs. And isn't it interesting, if you look in Luke chapter 22, verse 1, we're told the Passover, the Last Supper is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's all around that event. Jesus begins his ministry in the gospel, publicly giving voice to it anyway, uh, with a reference to the Passover season. And similarly, his 
um, public ministry comes to an end then too, right at the Passover time. And when all the lambs are getting set for the slaughter for Passover, so it is that Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, sits down with his disciples. And as he goes through the Passover with them, they're oblivious to the fact that, that he's the fulfillment of those Old Testament things. Uh, Jesus uh, goes through all this with them, and when everyone is just looking at the Passover Lamb, Jesus says, time out, guys. He says, wake up and smell the coffee. That's me. Much as there was Pharaoh, the ruler of that world, people were enslaved to him. So too, there's Satan, the ruler of this world, and people are enslaved to him. Much as uh, uh, God said, get a lamb without spot or blemish and apply it and you'll be set free in the Exodus story, so too that in today's story, says Jesus, that he is the lamb and he will be sacrificed and the blood will be applied with the net result that people can be set free. And so what have we here? Communion, Eucharist, Lord's Supper, call it what you will. This decidedly Christian reenactment is a story that evolves out of the Jewish Passover. And it's all about freedom for Jews yesterday, for Jesus' disciples yesterday, and for me and you today. Some of my earliest childhood memories take me back to celebrating the Passover in my Jewish family. It was a major celebration. I went to a religious Jewish school, the yeshiva, so-called, and we were gearing up for it there. But it was the time at home when my parents were alive and my grandmother was there. Mom and grandma were smuggled out of Nazi Germany, came over here to the New World, and. I just remember fondly the time when we celebrated a deliverance in the Hebrew Bible. But I can tell you this, the way that we celebrated it back then had nothing to do with what I talked about in my teaching segment. Well, I shouldn't say I had nothing to do. It was obscured. And by that I mean, I find it tragic that my Jewish friends don't see how the story that took place under Moses so wonderfully portents the story to come in the person of Yeshua, of Jesus. Similarly, it saddens me that my Christian friends in celebrating communion, the Eucharist, and remembering during Holy Week Jesus' death, his burial, his resurrection, and his last supper that, that kicks all that off, it saddens me that many don't see the Jewish connection. Now, we're not the only television program that talks about the Jewish connection to the Jesus story. We're not the only one, but we're the oldest one. And we've been at it for a long, long time because transformed people have found value in connecting the dots between the Testaments. And I'll tell you the value of it in short. One word, transformation. There's a Greek word, metamorphosis. Well, in English, metamorphosis. From meta, which means change, and morphe, which means form. There's an ugly caterpillar, goes into a cocoon, it dissolves therein and comes out a new and beautiful kind of species. Do you know that's a picture of what's made available to us through the story that's being told today? And by that I mean, I don't care if you've got a lot of ugly caterpillar written all over you. When you look in a mirror, you might say, ugly caterpillar. When you think of your circumstance, you might say, ugly caterpillar. Well, what I have to say is spin a cocoon, go into it, and come out a new, beautiful, flying creature. And that's the story of Easter. It's not just Jesus who rose from the dead. It's by virtue of his death by virtue of his sacrifice, 
by virtue of who he is and what he did, he affords the opportunity for us to rise from our graves, whatever they may be. The Bible tells that story from pillar to post, from one end to the other, and we love to tell it the most as we look at the good news through the eyes of the Jews. More to come. Our resource this week, The Miracle of Passover on DVD. These two programs presented by Zola Levitt detail how the highest of holidays for the Jewish people, the Passover, is full of symbolism which points to the Lamb of God, the Messiah himself. Get a copy for yourself or to share with friends. Contact us at our 800 number or our website and ask for the DVD, The Miracle of Passover. On the holy mountain in Jerusalem, take my son, my son, my only son. Slay him there and show me in Jerusalem of thy faith, thy faith that God is one. Oh my God, my only son, but ask of me and it is done. For in thy mercy, for in thy name, I know for me on the holy mountain in Jerusalem, take thy son, thy son, thy only son, slay him there and tell the world Jerusalem of thy faith, thy faith that it is. His only Son, believe on Him, and it is done, and always pray, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, Yerushalayim, Shalom, 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 for the holy city of Jerusalem. If you only watch us on television, you're missing additional content available only on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. You can sign up for a tour of Israel and Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. We've had testimonials from people on our tour bus who say there's no way financially that they could make it to Israel. But the testimony is that God provided for them and they are so thankful that they got on our tour bus. We would love for you to join us on a tour. You can find all the information on levitt.com. One of the places. Yes, yeah. I know you're going to talk about it. It's yeah. Passover meal. We've been talking about the upper room where yes. uh, we, we visit a site where they believe could have been the upper room where Jesus had a Passover meal with his disciples. Yes, and in the Gospels, you get the anticipation. Jesus tells them to go to this upper room and prepare the place. I mean, it's not just accidental. They sit down, okay, who brought the hamburger? I mean, it really is very intentional. It's set up in advance because it's really important. And the symbolism is just beautiful. We in the church miss out if we just take some bread and just take some wine. We, we don't get the full effect, and that's what's so beautiful and wonderful about having this teaching today. Well, you're kind to say it. You know, I look at the gospel uh, it comes across, even if you don't know the Jewish connection, but I liken it to watching uh, a television program in black and white. You can get the program, you can get the picture, but if you have the opportunity to get it in Technicolor with Dolby Sound, why not? And the Jewish background of the story adds dimension and depth that wouldn't otherwise be there, in my opinion. And we, we love the symbolism yes. of the Passover meal, the symbols that the church has for this Easter 
we're off a little bit. I mean, we have eggs, we have Easter baskets, we have chocolate bunnies. Where'd all that come from? Well, it emerges out of the root of the word Easter itself. It harks to uh, spring festivals that celebrate fertility. You know, the earth comes to life. And the reason why the bunny got traction in it is because they're known to be very fertile. Male bunny looks at female bunny the next morning, there's 20 little rabbits <laughs> in the litter. Now granted that's overstated, but it's a time, uh, if you go back to agrarians, when people lived off the land as farmers, they wanted the earth to be productive. And um, the rabbit depicted that, and the season, the spring, it all kind of worked together. So Jesus was, you know, attached to the reason for the season and the opportunity for new life and growth and possibilities. And there's some beauty to it. You know, I don't want to, you know, take uh, the bunny and shoot it in the head and put Easter to, <laughs> I'll eat Easter it. to bed. I'll no, eat the chocolate no, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to add the Jewish component to the story. I'm glad for anybody to remember Jesus. And whatever ceremony and symbol helps, I'm good with that. But I I think something is seriously lost when we neglect the Jewish hues associated with the good news. I think we need to learn so much more, and you've taught it so well in this series. Well, you're kind to say, you know, people come and teach, and not everybody remembers, but I'm glad that uh, you're excited about all this. I know that I am, and our viewers are as well. If it resonates with you, by the way, please give us a holler, send us a dollar. It ain't cheap to rent this airspace, but I don't want to uh, cheapen the moment by making a financial pitch. But when we remember Jesus, who died on the cross, he gave his blood so that life could be dispensed to others. If you can help us to tell this story, to pay the rent so that others might similarly develop an appreciation for the good news of the eyes of the Jews, we surely would appreciate it. There's a takeaway from this. Tell us what that might be. Relative to the Passover itself? Yes. Well, it it's, uh, harks back to what you said at the beginning of this take, that is miracle. God makes a way, whether it's going to Israel or going anywhere. I think nothing is impossible if we have Jesus Christ. That's the reason for the season. That's the message for the moment, that all things are yes in him. That's Amen. good, and we remember. That's why he said, do this, do this, do this. Remember, remember. all the time. Yes. Amen. We all want to be remembered. I hope you'll remember us. Let's do this again next week. Until then, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store. There, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministry.